Hey guys, Woodruff here. Um, so now let's talk about cluster headaches and what is different with these. Um, so cluster headaches are different in that they, um, similar to migraines, they are one-sided, but they don't have pain in the temporal region um, that's usually in or around their eye that they feel pain. This is actually kind of why sometimes it's confused with seasonal allergies because they um, they have this, um, like they can have eye swelling, tearing, things like that, that all can look kind of like allergies. But on top of that, um, they have like flushing of their face. Um, they can also start to have changes to their pupil um, and things like that. So it, it looks kind of like allergies, but not really. Cause the big difference here, and like we've kind of done it progressively, like tension headaches are usually considered more mild pain. They can get mild to moderate. Um, migraines are more moderate to severe and then cluster headaches are like the most severe type of headache. They actually, you know, there's jokes that like, this is the closest that, um, you know, men will ever come to experiencing childbirth. It is more common in men. Um, but, um, yeah, as a whole, um, it's definitely, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's definitely something that's very uncomfortable and I say uncomfortable. Like, I know that's not a way, like someone who's had one of these is going to like come and slap me in the face. It's very painful, um, compared to, you know, like with tension headaches, they have the tightness, um, the, um, migraines that have more of the throbbing pain people that have cluster headaches can um, can pair them to like a sharp pain of penetrating or burning or stabbing pain um and um the pain can be kind of like cyclical where it's like cycling through um on and off where it can be for a few minutes to you know a few hours and it can happen like eight times a day um, and it, they go through periods where they might go a long period of time with no symptoms and then I'll come back. Uh, they often happen more often at night um, than they do during the day. Um, and like I said, um, we a lot of times can recognize them because of the difference in symptoms and then that cyclical or episodic nature. So how do we manage these? Um, so we manage these, the first line, remember the first line for others, aspirin, NSAIDs. We don't mess around. Um, usually with cluster, we go straight to the SRAs, the serotonin receptor agonists. And because these patients, I mean, they are incredibly debilitated when they're having the acute pain where they can barely move. Um, so we uh, usually give the um, nasal or sub-Q SRAs so we can get them relief fast. And sorry, I just remembered like that I finally added this, you know, like this, um, or I, I'm, I, I forgot that I had this picture on there comparing it to childbirth. But anyway, um, the other treatment that's different that students always find confusing is that we give oxygen. So it's not quite understood how the oxygen helps. There is theories that, again, you know, because headache could be a vasodilation, that the O2 is a vasoconstrictor and constricts things. But we put them on oxygen right away. They're actually, these patients are going to go home on oxygen. Um, and that's going to help to prevent them from having, um, um, it can, um, it can, abort them from having the cluster headache pretty quickly. Um, so again, the SRA is the 100% oxygen. Um, if it's severe and they're not improving, they may end up having to go in and just, this is kind of like cardiac related. They can go in and do a nerve block or a ablation, just like they do the cardiac ablations where pretty much they're trying to um, stop the signals from happening that are leading to them having these cluster headaches. Um, we also can do, there's a specific prevention that's just for this one. I have a slide with prevention for other types of headaches, um, but specifically for prevention for cluster headaches, we use calcium channel blockers. We usually use what's called verapamil. Um, and the way that they think this helps, I know this is going to seem counterintuitive because this also relaxes or causes like some vasodilation. And uh, strangely enough, they think that the um, the relaxation, um, uh, what do you call it, um, affecting the vessel wall and the relaxation can actually um uh, it, it can help with cluster headaches specifically. Um, it's not well understood exactly how it helps because that's what students always ask me. They're like, it's so confusing. Like some stuff vasoconstricts, some vasodilates. Like why would that, how would this work? Um, I can't, I wish I had better answers for you aside from the fact that it, like it's not well understood, but we're just figuring, we find what works. When people have pain, you know, we try different things. They've done different studies and found some good results with this. Um, so these are prevention for cluster headaches. Um, but they help to reduce the pain and um, uh, can lead to improvement in quality of life. All right, so we, I'm going to stop there and the last video will be about general preventative or alternative treatments and um, nursing focus for all headaches. See you there.